Hey Bruce, what's up? Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are and what part of the world you're waking up or about to go to bed to. It's a somber day for the Gambia. It's once again a sad day for us. And it's very unfortunate that something of this magnitude has to happen for us to reflect on the plight of the Gambian youth. As we are all aware, 54 young people perished off the coast of Mauritania trying to find their way to the southern shores of Europe, mostly Spain and Italy. This is troubling, but then again the desperation and the destitution that most Gambian youths face leave them with no option but to try their luck out there. And in trying their luck, most of them perish into slavery going through the desert, or most of them getting swallowed by the mighty Atlantic Ocean. What a sad day, once again. But it's getting closer to home. And the closer it gets, I tend to wonder, does our politicians, our government appreciate and value the lives of our young, considering the fact that this country is made up of a youthful population? We just finished a budget exercise, and we all know how much has been apportioned to youth development in our budgets. The word youth dividend has been prostituted around by governments, politicians, and policymakers in this country. Do we really care about the youth of this country? And like many will say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. If so, if we really do care about them, the dialysis that we will spend in our budget to make sure that the youths of this country are well taken care of as it relates to their education, health, and access to social and socio-economic upward mobility, i.e. opportunities, will be truly reflected in our budgetary processes. But unfortunately, no. Most of the ventures that are helping out youths in our country today are donor-driven. And the objective of these donors are completely different from that of ours. Case in point, the YEP project. The European Union is giving us a project to help deter Gambian youths from reaching the shores of Europe, not to help them become great entrepreneurs or have lifelong skills to give them an independent livelihood. That's not the objective of the European Union. The European Union's sole objective is to slow our people from moving. Well, their objective and ours is surely not colliding. The objective of our government is not that of developing the youth folk of this country. And unfortunately, the youth folk can't see that they're nothing but pawns in a big game. The budget that will be read in the parliament tomorrow has little or no funds put in it for the welfare, well-being, be it economic, be it education or health of the Gambian youth. And mind you, our country has a population explosion of youths. And that's a ticking time bomb. And this ticking time bomb is adding to the frustration. And this frustration is forcing our people, our young kids, to take a risky journey across the desert or sail the Atlantic 
all the way to Italy, Portugal or Spain. It's painful. I just finished watching a video. A video of young able bodies floating back to the shores of Mauritania. Bloated. Dead. It's painful. My heart goes and bleeds for the families. The friends of these victims. And the lost hope of able-bodied Gambians that we have just lost and lost for good. And these are the ones that we know of. There are many of our young people that we can't account for because they've either fallen hands and fallen ill to the hands of the slave drivers in Libya, Niger and other places. Or they've just perished in the desolate desert out there in the Sahara. When are we going to stop this? I think that's a million dollar question we need to ask. And the people who can help stop this is our government. They have a duty of care. And that duty of care is to make sure that the Gambian youth is availed with an opportunity to upgrade their lives and livelihood. And the first opportunity you can give to anyone is good education and access to health care. And these two things have been lacking. And like I said, we just finished a budget exercise. And the commitment to change the fortunes of our youths hasn't been manifested in this budget at all, at all, at all. That is not scary. It's a disappointment. Who cares about the young people of this country? Who is championing the cause of the young people of this country? I beg to wonder, and I'm yet to see a political agent that's championing the cause of self-reliance for our youths. All of these politicians are singing the songs of the YEP project, this project, for crying out loud, that's not the Gambia's taxpayers' money. That's monies from some other places who are trying to just get rid of a menace, our young people sleeping in their streets, doing prostitution and drug peddling in their streets. That's why they're giving us those token sums of monies for us to encourage our kids not to go. That's not helping. And we should know by now that's not going to change our problem. Our problem will only change if the government of this country is committed to taking our meager resources and reallocate them towards the salvation, redemption, and empowerment of our young people. Without that, we will have more of our young people dying on a day-to-day -day basis trying to access economic opportunities elsewhere. I think I've watched the videos of these drowned young Gambians four or five times. And as I was watching their corpse drifting ashore. I was left with nothing but a heavy heart, asking myself, we are losing a generation. We're losing a generation to displacement. They're being displaced. Some of them are stateless because they try to travel without documentation so that they can't be returned. 
Most of them are unaccounted for by their families. They don't even know whether they exist or not any longer. Who is feeling it for these families? Who is caring for these young people who have lost hope? In terms of trying to make a life and a livelihood out of the very environment they were born in, their country. The toughest thing for any individual is to leave your loved ones behind. But if people are willing to go to that extent of leaving everything behind, taking a risk, going places that they don't even know, trying to attempt to reach places that they know that chances and odds are against them reaching and yet still they want to go. Knowing and seeing examples of people dying, people being prostituted, people being enslaved and people being swallowed by the desert and the ocean and they're still going. It means these people are hopeless. It means destitution has set in. It means desperation has set in. Because they know what the odds are and they're willing to take a bet against the odds. Collectively as a society, we need to stem the tide. Collectively as a society, with the help of this government, we need to do something. We can continue to fold our arms and see our young people dying, disappearing, ending up as slaves, as prostitutes, as drug peddlers, when they're capable competent, able bodies who can make a difference in their lives and the very societies they're from and communities. A sacrifice need to start with this government. Making a pledge that they will stop frivolously spending the meager resources of this country into travels, vehicles, galas, you name it and redirecting it towards empowering the youths. Help starts with self. No white person is going to help us. No European Union is going to help us. It's not their responsibility for crying out loud. So people should stop touting and telling us what the YEP and other projects are doing and tell us what they're doing with the little that we have to help our very own brothers and sisters. If not, we're going to have a lost generation. Imagine 22 years of Yaya Jame taking a lot from the Gambian youth. And now, when we thought we had a time for redemption, we're not doing much to make a difference. If Paul Kagame can pick up African kids and try to give them an opportunity. What about our very own giving their own an opportunity for upward mobility? It's all about priorities. And the government of the Gambia must set its priorities in order. Yes, we are a poor country. Yes, we have limited resources. But the ministers, the president, the vice president, the permanent secretaries who are plying our roads on these luxury cars, fully AC, fully paid for and fueled and maintained by the poor Gambian who's living the little things they were doing here to get on this mighty Atlantic only to perish, should invoke in the conscience of the public servants to know that they need to do something for the youth folk of this country. Whether we like it or not, all of us have been impacted one way or another by this menace. Because either we have friends, we have relatives, we have neighbors or acquaintances that have lost a family member or otherwise. We now know that a lot of you folks are just living clandestinely and nobody knows where they are. 
Is that a country we want to build? And I hope, I hope the handlers of the President of the Republic will implore on him to come out on national television and make an address to the nation. Not only pay condolences to the families, but make an address on how we're going to stem this tide. We're having an exodus, an exodus of our young, able bodies. And what makes it worse is the government and these projects trying to make poster boys and girls of youth success stories in this country. Showing us a Mohamed Sanyan, the poultry guy. Showing us a Momartal of Tropingo. Showing us a Tiga, Daraja Adi. These people are all tokens. They won out of six to 900,000 youths. So it's just like winning the lottery. That's not what we need. That's not foolish other. We have a crisis at hand. We are graduating more kids from our high schools and universities than opportunities we can avail them. Something needs to and ought to be done. And it starts with a sacrifice. And that sacrifice starts with the government of the Gambia cutting its cost and reprioritizing its priorities by making youth development a focal pillar of our national development agenda. And in so doing, it will be translated into our budgetary activities. We will see a commitment. I'm not talking about donor funding. I'm talking about our tax-paying dialysis being put into our budget to fund and promote the development of the youth of this country. The president is from the URR and I'm pretty sure he knows that the URR is one of the most affected regions of this country when it comes to the displacement of the youth in this country. URR has suffered a lot in terms of youths migrating elsewhere, especially towards Western Europe, only to die either in the seas or in the desert. Where is our conscience? Where is our conscience, Gambia? Where is our conscience? If our conscience is serving us, especially people within public service, we will start denying ourselves the perks we enjoy and make sure that the little that this country has is allocated more so towards developing the youth so that tomorrow we will have leaders in this country. But the way our young people are dying, traveling and living this country that we all need to stay in and build I'm sorry we cannot make a country we cannot build a country and we are doomed and Gambia on a daily basis as a country we scoring a, an own goal or we shooting ourselves on the foot depends on how you want to see it Yes, we score an own goal because we're being self-destructive. We're shooting ourselves on the foot because we're doing the wrong things that's self-inflicting and perpetuating the state of poverty in this country of ours. We are not taking care of ourselves. The beggar mentality of waiting for donors to take care of ours has no dignity in it either. I hear politicians and technocrats in the government every day talking about the youth dividend, the youth dividend, the youth dividend. 
I don't think they know what the youth dividend is. Because before you get a dividend, you need to invest. Let this government show us what they have invested in the youth of this country, apart from free token money we're getting from the EU and other donors. I'm talking about our tax-paying dollars. What we generate as Gambians, how much of it are we plowing back to give an opportunity to our youth folk? This is a shame. This is shameful. And it's utter disrespect for the young who are not asking for nothing but an opportunity and that opportunity can only be availed to them if we sacrifice and put resources where we need to put our resources in. The government needs to start putting its monies where its mouth is because we hear them prostituting words like the youth dividend, prostituting words like youth empowerment, prostituting words like we know that this country has a high population of youths. Well, you know that, but what are you doing to make sure that the upward mobility of the Gambian youth is preserved? What are we doing to make sure that opportunities, both in education and you know, economic opportunities, are made available to our youths. It doesn't take much. It takes sacrifice. It doesn't take much. It takes reprioritizing. It doesn't take much. It takes commitment. It doesn't take much. It takes conscience. Mr. President, Mrs. Vice President, Cabinet Ministers, permanent secretaries. We, the people of this country, have a crisis. And the crisis we have is a crisis of the youth and is called desperation. Where there is no hope, there is nothing to worry about. Mr. Jones, even that 11 million euro project, you need to understand how projects uh, manage and run. There is an admin cost to it. So at the end, the end user, the intended recipient, the youth, will not even get 40% at tops, 52% of the monies that are meant for the project. The rest will be admin, consultancies, and other things, which is not helping. But even with that, forget about it being a drop in the ocean. We should not allow outsiders to take care of our problem. The Europeans are giving us monies for us to create a deterrent for our youths not to get to the shores of Europe. The European interest is not for us to empower our youths. It's to cage our youths not to get to their shores. But I think our interest is not only to empower our youths, but give them lifelong skills and toolkits that will make them become not only the leaders of tomorrow, but the drivers of their destinies to make this country great. Nearly six out of 10 Gambians are youths. 80% of that 60% are hopeless. Poor education, zero access to opportunities, and yet still you want crime to go down as a nation. We either stupid or we indifferent to the plight of this country. Something is wrong with our conscience. When are the politicians of this country going to think how to make the lives and livelihood of the very people who we are trying to pass on the button as the next generation of Gambians 
to be well equipped to run a country. This country has already run aground because most of its best and brightest sons have left these shores and never to come back because there's nothing for them to come back to. And yet still, the ones we have here that we should give an opportunity to stay and help build this country, they're running en masse because there's nothing for them to look forward to as a nation. It's painful. It's tragic. And tragic at an epic proportion. Because Gambia is one of the smallest countries in this continent. But yet still, we have one of the highest incidents of migration. It means the government is not doing what it ought to do. Because if they were doing what they ought to be doing, the, those numbers won't be that high. Per capita of Gambians leaving Gambia is way, way too high relative to our neighbors, the Nigerians, the Ghanas, the Sierra Leones. And some of them are even distressed. If you look at the Liberia and Sierra Leone, those countries were war-torn. It means their numbers should have been higher than ours. But our numbers are high because our budgets and not reflecting what youth empowerment is all about. The time has come for either Gambians to take the bull by the horn, because when we don't fix this problem, the problem will crash on us. And that's exactly what's been happening. We're having cousins perishing. We're having sons and daughters perishing. We're having sisters, daughters prostituting themselves in countries like Libya. Not voluntary, but involuntarily. When will this end? It will only end when the government of this country start realizing that our hard-earned tax monies need to be spent on developing the youth of this country. And we stop touting and flagging out projects that belong to other people. Like I said, the interest of the European Union with their youth empowerment project is not that of the Gambia's youth's interest. It's not. Because imagine you telling people, I'm going to give you a micro loan of 800 euros to start a business. Yes, you can start a business even with a thousand dollars, but that's not what the Gambian youth needs. The Gambian youth needs lifelong skills, and those lifelong skills will be acquired through schooling. And that's where we have failed the Gambian youth. We didn't equip them with lifelong skills, hence the destitution we see today. You want someone to be an entrepreneur, you don't make them an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs are born, they're not made. So give people skills and good skill set and the best in them will emerge. And when the best in them emerge, they will be creators of employment and opportunities. So the government of the Gambia starts spending more of our tax monies into youth development and stop spending them on fleets of vehicles and travels and perks and allowances. This thing has hit too close to home. And I do hope someone who is close to the corridors of power will advise the captain of the ship of this country called the president to put on the brakes just hit the brakes. Let's see what we can do for our people because this is just not, it's not happening. Imagine you just wake up in the morning, 58 young Gambians floating, drifting to the shores in Mauritania. It's painful. It's not acceptable. Something needs to be done, must be done, should be done. And I hope 
we are not turning our hands once again to the donors to help us. Help starts with self. You know the Wallops are fond of saying Munsa Bopa, Gumsa Bopa, Momsa Bopa that is the reflection of independence. Munsa Bopa, Momsa Bopa, Gumsa Bopa. That's what independence is all about. And beggar thyself is what Gambians are living with and under in 2019 going into 2020 because when the Minister of Finance will come to our parliament that our budget has a shortfall because the donors didn't give us money. Why should someone give you money for your survival? Survive with what you have and cut your clothes according to your size. We should live with what we have. And what we have, we need to prioritize it and make sure that the vulnerable groups in our society, as particularly the youths, are well taken care of. Because lead to them care. We have failed ourselves. And shame on all of us. Shame on all of us. Because these politicians and technocrats driving these pajeros on our streets, foiling it with the poor man's sweat and still the poor man's son and daughter dying in the desert, drowning in the ocean and prostituting themselves in Libya only to find dignity in living. These kids living our shores are just trying to find dignity in being human beings. Dignity in being human beings. That's what leading them to their perilous deaths. Their undignified deaths. They're trying to find dignity in being a human being. And it's the responsibility of the state to accord dignity to her citizens. And it starts with taking what we collectively own as Gambians and put it into a better use. And better use starts with spending and investing more in youths, not asking Tubabs and Nars and others to invest in your own. Start investing in your own with the little that we own. I am very sad today. I am very troubled and I'm very worried that the trajectory that our youth folk are taking is worrisome. You walk along the streets of Kairaba Avenue, you see a lot of young, mad youths. It's not drug abuse, it's frustration. See, Gambians are quick at looking at consequences, not cause of problems. Consequences are end results. Causes are the roots of why those end results happen. The consequences is the end. The roots are what the problems are. You have a six-year-old Gambian that starts primary school. Bad education. Bad teachers, poor health care. That youth has lost a chance of excelling in life. That youth turns 12, 14, start hanging out around Senegambia, begging for crumbs from white people to take home and help mother and father. The next thing, he, she wants to go to Europe. Either ends up being a bombster and prostituting themselves if they're girls and being abused before they even turn 18 all because the government didn't give them a good opportunity in life. And it's that opportunity that we need to try and give our people. Gambians don't want handouts. They want opportunities. The youth folk of this country don't want handouts. They want opportunities. Opportunities for upward mobility and opportunity to prepare them, mold them with lifelong skills 
to be able to be self-reliant once they are independent. Like I said, independence in Wolof is Momsa Bopa, Munsa Bopa, Gomsa Bopa. But for you to have these three virtues, you need to be prepared. And government has a big role in the preparation of our youth for eventual independence. If not, destitution is what will come their way. And destitution is swallowing the youth folk of this country. And the government has been watching way before Adam Abaro came to power, even in Jame days. But I expect this government to make a U-turn. I expect, or I, I expected rather, I should use that word, I expected this government to make a U-turn and really commit to youth empowerment, youth development, and youth preservation. If you don't preserve the youths, you will not have leaders of tomorrow. If you don't have leaders of tomorrow, what we see in Gambia today, we will have foreigners dominating our economic space. Nothing's wrong with that. But you know what? We will be relegated as Gambians because we are not empowered. When you don't empower your people, they become followers, not leaders. So who are we going to pass on the baton as it relates to the next generation of Gambians? Who? Not with the attitude we have today as a nation because we are not putting our money where our mouths are. We are prostituting the word youth development. We are prostituting the word youth dividend. There is no dividend for the youth of this country because if we knew or if we know that bulk of this country are made up of youths, at least we will invest in them. When we invest in them, we will have a return. Then the youth dividend will be a reality. Now we have a youth nightmare. The youth of this country are in a limbo. Their development has been arrested because us, we the people, are not putting our monies into them. I'm just coming from a forum talking about trade. And I'm just about to write a report, but I have to suspend everything I was doing. I was just walking. I have to suspend everything I was doing to come down and see how best I can share my little because it's painful reading the headlines internationally, hearing that 58 of your countrymen perished and all they are doing is running away looking for opportunities when our very government is squandering monies on cars, travel, allowances on themselves. Where is our conscience, Gambia? Where are we heading? Are we taking care of the next generation of Gambia who will, or Gambians rather, who are going to take over this country? If we don't prepare them, Gambia will still be in the, will be in the mess we still find ourselves today because we're not doing much. And the Wallops will say, Lead to them care. So, Mr. President, Mr. Vice Pre Mrs. Vice President, Cabinet Ministers, Permanent Secretaries, do a self-reflection and see whether collectively your policy is responsive to the youth needs of this country. Don't fool yourselves and stop fooling the youths too. The youths are running after you, following you, yet still they've been prostituted. Where is conscience in all of this equation? Where is morality in all of this equation? The idea of Segal Mawarla must be stopped by you, the political class. Stop prostituting Gambians, especially the youths, and give them opportunities to be better people. That's all they ask of you, not handouts. We should not be giving people handouts. 
and let's forget about this YEP project and start a homegrown initiative to help the youth of this country. Sorry, but things are just not happening for my younger brothers and sisters. I pray for my country, but I equally pray that the politicians will open their hearts, open their minds to help the young people of our country. We need them because we're in a relay and soon our generation will get to that line where we need to give the baton to the next one. But have we prepared them? Have we equipped them adequately to give them a button? We're setting them for failure. And if we want that failure to curb, to seize, let's start putting monies where our mouths are. If not, our kids and younger brothers and sisters will be very disappointed with us as a generation because we haven't done much for them. On that note, my condolences to the families, to the friends, to the acquaintances of these 58 young able bodies, men and women, who just perished, just like our ancestors perished in the Atlantic during slavery. This is no better than slavery, by the way. It's no better than slavery what's happening to these people. Slavery was involuntary. This one is voluntary. They know the risk and they're still taking it because of desperation. And it's that desperation the government must address. It's that desperation we must seize. It's that desperation we must arrest. And leadership is not about talking. It's about fixing. So I expect the leadership of this country, from the politicians to the technicians, to start fixing the youth problem of this country and stop showcasing to us the poster boys and girls, the Mohammed Sanyam of the poultry, the Tiga Dei Fatunjais, the Momar Tals. We don't want those people have already made them, but you know what? They drop in the Gambian Ocean. For every 15,000 young Gambians, one will be a Tiga, one will be a Momartal, and one will be a Mohammed Sanyang. So let's stop showcasing poster boys and girls. Let's come with a strategy to solve the problem of the masses of the Gambian youths. And let us know that it's not the intervention of Tubabs and the Qatars who are going to solve our youth problem. Is the intervention of us, the people, the country, the government with the little that we have to put it where we ought to put it to make sure that we have a better future put there for the next generation of Gambians. My heart is bleeding today, honestly. I have work to do, like I said. I was just right at my desk doing work. I have to leave what I was doing because my heart is bleeding. I am shocked. I am disturbed. But more so, I am disappointed that a budget that we just finished is not giving much to the youth of this country. The budget that the Minister of Finance is going to read tomorrow at the Assembly hasn't done much for youth development or youth empowerment. Sorry for the youth of this country. My generation, we are the ones who are letting you down because we are not doing enough for you and the drivers of our destiny, our government, must endeavor to do a little bit more to help you to be self-reliant, to be equipped with lifelong skills, to be able to take care of yourself. It's sad. But we shall overcome collectively 
And some of us, we shouldn't be tired of talking. Some of us, we should persuade our political class, our technocrats, to do more than they're doing, to sacrifice and make sure that our limited resources go more towards the other side rather than to the little benefits and perks they're getting, whether it's in allowances, their transportation and others. The little that they think is, won't make a difference will be the game changers in the life of most of our youths. On that note, Mange Jale Gambians, yep, on what we've lost. This is our collective loss. It's not the families that lost. It's the potential of this country that have lost able bodies, great minds, people who could have made a difference and should have made a difference, but unfortunately, desperation kicked in and knowing all the risk, just like playing lottery or Russian roulette with a gun, they took the risk and they've met up with their faith. May their souls rest in peace. May the gates of heaven be open to them. But to our technocrats and our politicians and the driver in chief, when you go to bed, know that you have a role to play in the loss of those lives. Because there are things that could have been done Maybe one or two of them would not have opted to go. But it's never too late. Let's do something to help our younger people fight the desperation they're going through. Unemployment is a disease, and it's a disease that eats your morality and dignity. And that's what the Gambian youth is suffering. Drug abuse and crime is a consequence of desperation. Mental illness is a consequence of desperation. And these is, are the things that are inflicting the social ills we see in this society. Something needs to happen and this government needs to do something. God bless the Gambia. But God also help those that help themselves. And I hope the government will help its citizens by trying to spend a little bit more of what we own, not what that's given to us, but what we own in empowering our people. For the Gambia, I, Nyang Jai, remain ever true. The interest of this country is our collective interest. The pain of one Gambian is our collective pain. The tear of one Gambian is our collective tear. So today, we the people of Gambia have lost 58 souls. And one of them could have been a president. One of them could have been a giant of industry. One of them could have been anything that would have taken this country forward. So a minute of silence to our brothers and sisters that perished in the mighty Atlantic off the coast of Mauritania. Let's observe a minute of silence for them. Thank you so much, Gambia. And I do hope we all reflect and put pressure on our politicians to start helping us help our people. God bless this country. Let's do more to make it better. She deserves it. She is crying. She is screaming. She is sick. She has been prostituted. She has been battered. And above all, she has lost hope. Let's give her hope. Let's raise her. Let's give dignity to her. Let's make her smile. She is frowned for so long. Let's make her proud. And let's give an opportunity to our children. So long, Gambia. I love you all. Thank you.